From the NCN Sports Desk, this is Kyle Mathis with your All Red 99.5 Sports Report. This sports report is brought to you by Tronick Simmentals. Visit them at tronicksimmentals.com. Also by Closet and Sons Dirtwork of Beatrice, Chapel Roofing in Fairbury, Hilltop Fitness and Performance in Crete, Crete Area Medical Center, Wilbur and Friend Medical Clinics, Smith Auto in Pawnee City. Learn more at smithautone.com. And Premier Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC in Beatrice. Discover the premier difference. Nebraska football revealed its new tradition this fall. They have teammates vote for who gets to wear single-digit uniform numbers as a way to honor those who are veterans of the sport of college football. Virginia Cavalier transfer Billy Kemp IV picked number one for the Huskers. Safety Isaac Gifford will wear number two. Luke Reimer, linebacker for the team, is wearing number four after having a great season last year with 86 total tackles and a sack. And Georgia Tech transfer and quarterback Jeff Sims will wear number seven. Nebraska continues its fall camp as it gets closer to opening the season in Minneapolis against the University of Minnesota on Thursday, August 31st at 7 p.m. The game could be watched on Fox. The Kansas City Royals fell to the Red Sox 2-0 last night in Fenway. They lost three out of the four games in that series against the Red Sox. Michael Garcia had two hits in the losing effort for the Royals. They will play the Cardinals in Kansas City this weekend, tonight and tomorrow, a short two-game series. Meanwhile, the St. Louis Cardinals beat the Rays 5-2 in Tampa Bay, winning two out of the three games against the second-best team in the American League, the Rays. A huge performance by Matthew Liberatore, the starting pitcher, who pitched eight innings, only allowing two hits and no runs, as well as seven critical strikeouts. Only three races remain in the NASCAR regular season, as it heads to Indianapolis Motor Speedway Road Course this weekend for the Verizon 200 at the Brickyard. Tyler Reddick won the race last year and is looking to defend his crown. He also would get his second win of the year. He won earlier at the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix in Austin, Texas. Now for the Verizon 200 at the Brickyard, that race will take place this Sunday at 1.30 p.m. on NBC. The second overall pick in the NFL Draft, C.J. Stroud, played last night for the Houston Texans after getting drafted from Ohio State University. He had a short game played with only two completions and 13 passing yards. He also threw an interception as well. The Texans would go on to win that game though, 20 to nine over the New England Patriots in Foxborough. The PGA Tour played round one of the FedEx St. Jude Championship yesterday, the first round of the FedEx Cup playoffs. With two weeks remaining until the Tour Championship Players are looking to push up the FedEx Cup standings. Jordan Spieth leads the tournament at 7-under, with Tom Kim from South Korea, one shot behind him at 6-under. Round two will be played today, and the final round of the tournament will be Sunday on CBS. That'll do it for the Old Red 99.5 Sports Report. I'm Kyle Mathis. From the NCN Sports Desk, this is Kyle Mathis with your All Red 99.5 Sports Report. This sports report is brought to you by Crete Area Medical Center, Wilbur and Friend Medical Clinics, Smith Auto in Pawnee City. Learn more at smithautone.com. Heath Sports Shop in downtown Crete, Western United Med- Mutual Insurance, Home Office in Wilbur, Lambo Plumbing in Beatrice, and by Southeast Valley Irrigation, your valley dealer in Bruning. In breaking news for the Cornhuskers football program, the talented wide receiver Xavier Betts has left the team, according to a press conference with head coach Matt Rule on Saturday. Here's what head coach had to say on the matter. And then on a personnel note, uh, Xavier Betts has left the team. Um, uh, you know, came to me and uh, just said, "Hey, coach, I'm you know, I'm just my heart's not in it." So, very, very, very proud of Xavier for what he's done as a person, uh, getting eligible. Um, I think he intends to stay in school and, and, and work to graduate. So obviously, as I told him, disappointed in the timing. Um, but you know what we ask people to do is hard. If, if their heart's not in it, we certainly understand. So This comes with only two weeks remaining until the start of Nebraska's college football season on the road in Minneapolis against the University of Minnesota. The Kansas City Royals split a two-game home series with the St. Louis Cardinals, winning on Friday 12-8, but falling on Saturday 5-4. Salvador Perez of the Royals went 4-4, four for four, with a homer in the win on Friday, but the Cardinals' own Nolan Arenado went three for four in the win on Saturday. The Royals will be at home to start the week today through Thursday for a four-game series against the Seattle Mariners, who are just a game and a half out of the American League wildcard. 
The Cardinals, on the other hand, will be at home as well against the not-so-good Oakland Athletics. That series spans through Wednesday. In NASCAR, Michael McDowell took the crown at the Verizon 200 at the Brickyard Sunday, just ahead of Chase Elliott in second and Daniel Suarez in third. The win puts McDowell in 15th place in the NASCAR Cup Series standings with two races to go until the playoffs. Martin Truex Jr. still leads the standings ahead of second place Danny Hamlin. The next race will be next Sunday in New York on USA Network. For the Kansas City Chiefs, they fell in New Orleans against the Saints in its preseason opener Sunday 26-24. Patrick Mahomes had a short game, having two completions for 15 yards, but it was a great performance from Shane Bouchel, who former SMU player who had 115 passing yards for the Chiefs with two passing touchdowns. The Chiefs will play next week against the Arizona Cardinals in Glendale on their second preseason game as they get ready for their NFL kickoff game against the Detroit Lions on September 7th. In other NFL news, the number one overall pick in the NFL draft, Bryce Young from the University of Alabama, played in his first NFL game for the Carolina Panthers. Going up against a pretty good New York Jets defense, Young threw for 21 yards on four completions. But it was a great game for Jets quarterback Zach Wilson, who had 123 yards with a passing touchdown and the 27 to nothing win. Also to mention that Aaron Rodgers, the new New York Jet, was on watching Zach Wilson. Finally, Lucas Glover won his second straight PGA Tour event Sunday with a playoff win over Patrick Cantley in the FedEx St. Jude Invitational. Glover had already won the Wyndham Championship the week prior and got the win this weekend, cementing his spot in the FedEx Cup standings with fourth place, with only one event left to play until the Tour Championship in Atlanta. Well, that'll do it for the Old Red 99.5 Sports Report. I'm Kyle Mathis. From the NCN Sports Desk, this is Kyle Mathis with your Old Red 99.5 Sports Report. This sports report is brought to you by Husker Rehab in Fairbury, Beatrice, Lincoln, and Nebraska City, Star Plumbing, Heating and Air Conditioning in Fairbury, Jefferson Community Health and Life in Fairbury, Star Buco Insurance in Fairbury, Wells Implement in Plymouth, Norris Public Power District, and Friend Fertilizer, your rain key dealer and friend. Miles Farmer, a former Husker, found his new team on Sunday. He will be heading to the East Coast to play for the Syracuse Orange in the ACC. This comes after Farmer was suspended during the summer by Matt Rule and entered the transfer portal in July. Farmer had two interceptions and over 50 solo tackles as a defensive back for the Huskers in the 2021 and 22 seasons combined. Now, he will play his first game with the Orange in week one at home against Colgate College. The AP poll released its preseason top 25 Monday. The Georgia Bulldogs have the number one spot for the second time in team history. Michigan and Ohio State take second and third, with Penn State at number seven. Wisconsin is put at number 19, with the Iowa Hawkeyes finishing the Big Ten representation in the rankings at number 25. Nebraska did not receive votes for the top 25 in the preseason, but they will play Minnesota in week one, who did receive six votes in the preseason AP Top 25 poll. In breaking news within the NFL, the New England Patriots will sign Ezekiel Elliott from the Dallas Cowboys for a one-year $6 million deal, according to Elliott's social media account Monday. This comes after Zeke and the Dallas Cowboys had trouble finalizing a deal earlier in the summer. Here is what Adam Schefter had to say about the trade. Well, he just tweeted moments ago that he's going to New England. He's going back to the number he wore in college, number 15. So Ezekiel Elliott is going to the New England Patriots. Now, keep in mind, he and the New England Patriots have been going back and forth here for for about a month. Yeah, Yeah, and and at various points, New England thought the deal was getting done, thought it was getting done. Just a short time ago, I was told it wasn't done, but Zeke Elliott just tweeted moments ago that he's going to the Patriots. In other trade news in the NFL, the New York Jets have signed Vikings running back Dalvin Cook in a one-year $8.6 million deal Monday. This comes after conversations with the New York Jets for about a week between Cook and New York. This continues to stack up the talent on the Jets' offense, most notably with the addition of quarterback Aaron Rodgers in the offseason. 
The Kansas City Royals defeated the Seattle Mariners Monday night, 7-6 on a walk-off sacrifice bunt by Darian Blanco to win the game. Like this, there it is, he gets it down, and the Royals win it! What a game! What a finish! It was a phenomenal performance by Bobby Witt Jr., who went 4-for-5 for with a home run and three runs scored. The Royals will play the Mariners today through Thursday in Kansas City. The St. Louis Cardinals took down the Athletics 7-5 Monday in St. Louis. Paul Goldschmidt had a home run on two hits with two runs scored in the win. Hammer out to left. Deep into the night. See you later, baby. A home run for Paul Goldschmidt, and the Cardinals have taken the lead back 3-2. The Colorado Rockies beat the Arizona Diamondbacks 6-4 in Colorado. Ezekiel Tovar went 3-4 for four with a home run and two runs scored as the Rockies try to climb back in the National League West Division. That'll do it for the All Red 99.5 Sports Report. I'm Kyle Mathis. From the NCN Sports Desk, this is Kyle Mathis with your Old Red 99.5 Sports Report. This sports report is brought to you by Sherbarth Ace Hardware in Fairbury, Miller Sales in Claytonia, Tatro Chiropractic in Fairbury and Deschler, Beatrice Community Hospital and Health Center, Plymouth Irrigation and Plymouth Electric, AgWest Commodities, your marketing partner. Go online at goagwest.com and by Match Oil, your Sinclair gas and diesel stations, in Fairbury. The Nebraska football team announced Tuesday on Twitter that it will be celebrating the 100-year anniversary of the first game played at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln on October 21st when Nebraska plays the Northwestern Wildcats at home. They revealed the alternate uniforms they will be wearing for that game on Twitter. The uniform featured red shirts with white pants and blue outlines of the white numbers on the front of the uniform. Can you believe this is the 100th year of Memorial Stadium? That's crazy. Look at that, a hundred years ago, Nebraska actually wore blue uniforms. When Oklahoma came to play, they wore red uniforms. So Nebraska, being the good sports they are, changed their color to blue for that day. Fans can get more information about the celebration at huskers.com slash 100 years at Memorial Stadium. Matt Rule also spoke after practice Tuesday about how his team was getting prepared to start its season. Uh, the days start to pile up on you, obviously, but when you look at it on the flip side, there's not many days left to practice before 831. So, um, we, you know, we better remain a very humble team, you know, and, and uh, if we want to be confident come game time, we have to earn it right now. So um, there's a, the added distraction of being home, being out of the dorms and all those things. And uh, um, I think our guys have maintained good focus so far. So. I've never questioned this team's work ethic. They work, so so far it's been pretty good. The Kansas City Royals lost a nail-biter Tuesday to the Seattle Mariners 10-8 in 10 innings. It was a clutch three-run ninth inning for the Royals that tied the game at eight, but a two-run RBI single by Mariners player Ty France put Seattle up by two in the 10th. Ty hey, France. Up the middle, and it's into center field. Marlowe is in to score. Caballero, he rushes home. with two outs in the top of the 10th. The Royals have two games remaining in this home series against the Mariners. The Chicago White Sox took down the Chicago Cubs in the Crosstown Classic Tuesday. With the final score being 5-3, it was a clutch no-doubter home run by Luis Robert Jr. in the seventh inning to give the Sox a 4-3 lead. That ball's launched to left field. Way out of here. Sox take the lead. The Sox and the Cubs will play tonight at Wrigley Field in the final game of this short two-game rivalry series between the two teams. The St. Louis Cardinals defeated the Oakland Athletics for the second straight night, 6-2. The win puts the Cards on a three-game winning streak. Nolan Arenado had another phenomenal performance with four hits and two RBIs. 1-2 pitch. Launched into left. Get out of here. See ya. Home run. No. against the A's. It's three to nothing. The Cardinals will finish the athletic series tonight and then play the New York Mets in St. Louis this weekend.
Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver Justin Ross left practice on a cart Tuesday with an apparent leg injury, according to head coach Andy Reid. According to NFL insider Ian Rappaport, it does not look like a serious injury and he should be okay. Chiefs fans should have nothing to worry about. Well, that'll do it for the All Red 99.5 Sports Report. I'm Kyle Mathis. From the NCN Sports Desk, this is Kyle Mathis with your All Red 99.5 Sports Report. This sports report is brought to you by Building Tech, your Seco building systems builder in Beatrice, certified truck and trailer repair in Geneva, Sap Bros of Philly, Crete, Lincoln, and Hanover, Kansas, Creative Surfaces, your countertop specialists of Beatrice, Thayer County Health Services in Hebron, Bruning, Davenport, and Detchler, and by Members Own Credit Union in Beatrice and Lincoln. Football season is finally here and kicking off sooner than you might think. The Beatrice Varsity football team will be opening its season at home against Elkhorn North Friday. The game will take place in week zero of the season. Elkhorn North is coming off of its first playoff win in team history after a solid 7-4 year. Beatrice experienced a year to forget last season with a 3-7 record and is looking to start the season off on the right note. Kickoff will be on Friday at 7 p.m. and can be watched on the new channel Nebraska TV channel and listened to on Old Red 99.5. Don't miss Beatrice versus Elkhorn North. In other football news, Norris High School will open its season Friday on the road against Blair. Crete will play Friday at home against Omaha Westview along with Pawnee City who will play St. Edward at home on Friday as well. Fairbury softball will open its season tonight against Freeman, along with Beatrice, who will play Norris in softball as well. Cornhuskers linebacker Luke Reimer is one of the 80 players named to the Lombardi Award watch list in the preseason. The award is given to the player that best embodies the values of NFL coach Vince Lombardi. Rumors that Florida State and Clemson were looking to join the Big Ten have fallen through, and most likely the Seminoles and Tigers will stay in the ACC. They might join the SEC, potentially along with the Miami Hurricanes, who are also a part of those rumors. The Kansas City Royals lost another game to the Seattle Mariners 6-5. Julio Rodriguez had a great game, going 4-6 for six with two RBIs. 1-1 one, one pitch. Towards the line, foul territory, catch me. Dylan gonna try to score, here's the play. He is, he got the hand in there. Got the left hand in. Ty France will move up to second, nobody covering the back. Gino advanced as well. Mariners have a 5-4 lead. The Royals finish up the series tonight against the Mariners before heading to the Windy City to take on the Cubs in Wrigleyville. Speaking of the Cubs in Windy City, it was an instant classic in the Cubs versus White Sox rivalry game as the Cubs won the game on a walk-off three-run home run by Christopher Morell. The Sox came into the ninth inning with a 3-1 lead, but the clutch hitting of Cody Bellinger and a walk drawn by Dansby Swanson allowed Morell to hit the walk-off. The Cubs are now three games back from the NL Central leading Milwaukee Brewers. They are tied with the Miami Marlins and the Cincinnati Reds for the final wildcard spot in the National League. In NFL news, Tampa Bay Buccaneers wide receiver Russell Gage reportedly experienced a season-ending non-contact injury during practice Wednesday, according to ESPN. It occurred when he was backpedaling during 7-on-7 drills. This injury comes with Tampa Bay in a rough spot in the preseason. Two quarterbacks, Baker Mayfield and Kyle Trask, fighting for a starting position, and the recent retirement of NFL legend Tom Brady in the offseason. The PGA Tour is now one event away from the Tour Championship in Atlanta. The BMW Championship this weekend pits the top 50 golfers in the FedEx Cup standings in Olympia Fields, Illinois, for a chance to improve their ranking. Golfers have to get at least in the top 30 in the FedEx Cup standings to get into the Tour Championship next weekend in Atlanta. John Rahm leads the FedEx Cup standings with Scotty Scheffler in second. Rory McIlroy is in third. Lucas Glover, last weekend's winner. And Patrick Cantlay, last weekend's runner-up, round out the top five in the standings. Well, that'll do it for the Old Red 99.5 Sports Report. I'm Kyle Mathis. From the NCN Sports Desk. This is Kyle Mathis with your Old Red 99.5 Sports Report. This sports report is brought to you by Tronick Simmentals. Visit them at tronicksimmentals.com. 
Clausen and Sons artwork of Beatrice, Chapel Roofing in Fairbury, Hilltop Fitness and Performance in Crete, Crete Area Medical Center, Wilbur and Friend Medical Clinics, Smith Auto in Pawnee City, learn more at smithautone.com, and by Premier Chevrolet, Buick, GMC, and Beatrice. Discover the premier difference. The Beatrice Varsity football team will be opening its season at home tonight against Elkhorn North. Kickoff will be at 7 p.m. in Beatrice. Elkhorn North is coming off of its first playoff win in team history after a solid 7-4 year. Beatrice experienced a year to forget last season with a 3-7 record and is looking to start the season off on the right note with a huge upset. The game can be watched on the news channel on Nebraska television channel and listened to on Queeby 94.7 in Beatrice. Don't miss Beatrice versus Elkhorn North. In other football news, Norris High School opened its season tonight on the road against Blair. Crete will play tonight at home against Omaha Westview, along with Pawnee City, who will play St. Edward at home. Fairbury will host a Gatorade football scrimmage tonight at 7 p.m. at the high school. The team has less than a week left until they open the season next Thursday against Tri-County at home. Fairbury lost in its softball opener, 10 to nothing against Freeman Thursday. The Jeffs will play York on Saturday. UNL Athletic Director Trev Albert spoke in Southeast Nebraska on Thursday night as part of a fundraising kickoff. Big Ten expansion, the importance of community support in Nebraska, and, of course, Husker football. All were popular topics. NCN Sports Now's Jake Bartecki has more. The Big Give Gage kickoff dinner in Beatrice held a special guest on Thursday night. University of Nebraska Athletic Director Trev Alberts took time to speak at the event. Alberts was invited by Beatrice native and UNL Regent Rob Schaefer. He invited me to come down, talk to me a little bit about the, the foundation and the, the Big Give and, and sort of what's happened here in Beatrice and, and community needs and philanthropy coming together. And so uh, I thought I'd come down and, and uh, see the great things that are happening in Beatrice, maybe talk a little Husker athletics, and uh, so it's great to be here. Over 70 area organizations take part in Big Give Gage, and the foundation has raised over a million dollars in the last four to five years. Albert says figures like these make Nebraska a special place. It's just a really important thing. Uh, that's what makes Nebraska special, is that uh, we come together for big things, and uh, our communities are important to us, and we support them. In December, Nebraska hired Matt Rule as their next head football coach. Albert says the work he's seen from Rule, his staff, and the team has been impressive, both on and off the field. You know, Matt's really come in, and, and he understands the importance of community as well. So um, I loved his interactions uh, with, with our fan base so far. Um, he's been out. Um, he also is giving up his time. He's speaking tonight at another event, uh, supporting the university. But um, I love what they're doing. I love how practice is going. Um, they're working hard. No guarantees on wins. Uh, but we're building the culture and foundation that ultimately will lead to wins. And so he surrounded himself by really good people. And I'm really pleased uh, with the effort vision and passion that coach has showed in his time here in Nebraska. While Husker football kicks off on August 31st in Minnesota just the day before Husker volleyball takes on volleyball day in Nebraska as matches between UNK and Wayne State and the Huskers and UNO take place at Memorial Stadium. Volleyball day in Nebraska is going to be special. We have over 90,000 people coming to Memorial Stadium and so continuing to pray for good weather. Alberts also discussed the Big Ten expansion as just last week the conference announced additions of current Pac-12 schools Oregon and Washington to join in 2024. This pushes the total number of schools to 18 with USC and UCLA also leaving the Pac-12 for the Big Ten. Albert says Nebraska's geographic location at the heart of the country and conference could be an advantage, but the difficulty comes from more competition athletically. I'm excited. Those are tremendous brands. It only makes it more difficult in terms of winning, uh, but that's okay. We signed up to be part of uh, an elite conference academically and athletically, and I think these four schools bring another element of excellence that, that will be good for Nebraska. In Beatrice, Jake Bartecki, News Channel Nebraska. The Kansas City Royals lost its final game of the series against the Mariners 6-4. Timely hitting by the Mariners in a three-run eighth inning and a one-run ninth inning for Seattle got the team the win. The Royals will play the Cubs this weekend in Wrigleyville. The Kansas City Chiefs will play the Arizona Cardinals on the road Saturday at 7 p.m. That can be watched on a local channel. The Dallas Cowboys will play the Seahawks in Seattle on the same day at 9 p.m. That game can be watched on NFL Network. NASCAR comes to the end of the season as it travels to New York this weekend for the Go Bowling at the Glen race. The previous winner, Kyle Larson, will try to win his fourth race of the season. 
He has already won the Toyota Owners 400, the NOCO 400, and the NASCAR All-Star Race. The race will begin Sunday at 2 p.m. on USA Network. The first round of the BMW Championship came to a close Thursday evening with Brian Harmon and Rory McIlroy tied in the lead at five under par. A six-way tie for second will make for an exciting finish at the event. The final round can be watched on CBS Sunday, with next weekend being the Tour Championship in Atlanta. That'll do it for the All Red 99.5 Sports Report. I'm Kyle Mathis.